I'm delighted to welcome you to Reach the World ASAP. My name is Pastor Scott Griswold, and I work for ASAP Ministries. This last spring, I had the privilege of visiting Thailand with my son, Nathan. We were both really glad to be back in the country we'd lived in for 10 years. The people are friendly, the countryside is beautiful, the food is so delicious. We were even able to go back to the house where Nathan grew up. We enjoyed visiting our old neighbors, talking to friends. We walked by the pond where we used to swim and jump from the trees, and we relived old memories and stories. I had Nathan record some for you to hear too. So here's one I'd like to share with you called, Jump In, He's Drowning. One Sabbath morning while my family and I were living in Thailand, we got up and got ready to go to church. Church was way down the road, about 45 minutes, as we had no church in this area. When we found out that our littlest boy was sick, my wife decided she better stay home with him. So we hopped in the car. We had one friend visiting us from Mongolia. His name was Bold. And we went on down and got there in time for Sabbath school and church. Afterwards, there was always a potluck. So we were eating up, um, not thinking about the little guy at home too much, but wanting to get back before too long. And then the lady started talking to us. And she talked, and she talked, and she talked. And finally, we got away and headed back. These little details are important to the story, so hang on to them as I tell you what seems like unimportant stuff. As we were driving back, I thought, hey, my friend Bold would really like to see the ruins in the city. And then for some reason I stopped and thought, nah, tomorrow's a better day for it, let's go on home. We drove in, right down on this road, came up to our house, and as we got there, just at that moment, Julie, my wife, came out with our little boy, Josiah. He was feeling well enough to take a walk, and. The rest of us, we didn't feel like taking a walk. We were ready to go to sleep, take it easy, just relax. But we decided, okay, they've been home alone all this time. Let's go with them and let's come down on the walk. Well, as you can hear the dogs barking maybe coming through here, we usually did not take a walk going this way because they'd come out and sometimes they'd bite us. Usually we'd go around the other way, around the lake. But that day, for some reason, we decided we'd come this way. Our friend Miu, she was not feeling like walking. She said, I'll grab the bike and come. So we started walking down the road this way, just enjoying the beauty of the flowers and the birds and everything that was going on. And then, as we were walking, we saw something off the corner of our eyes wobbling, wobbling, and suddenly splashed right into the pond. It was a drunk man on his bike. We were kind of laughing about it. He was bobbing there and we thought, well, that'll wake him up. And then he wasn't bobbing anymore. He was down, he was under, he was drowning. Immediately, Mio took off on her bike to try to get around over the little bridge. Bold also started running as fast as he could. I was just kind of standing around dazed, like, this is amazing. And then suddenly I realized, I gotta get to him. And I jumped into the pond and started swimming as fast as I could to get to the other side. We all got there almost at the same time. Mio got there first, and some little kids were saying, right there, right there, he's down there. And then Bold came in, came down just as I came up, and we were able to pull down, I mean, pick up and get him out onto the edge. He just laid there, he wasn't breathing. And water started coming out of his mouth and we hit him a bit and coughed and he was breathing again. He was out of it. We picked him up, got him in a car and carried him back to his home. It was incredible. As all the details began coming together in our mind, we realized if we had come home any later by going into Ayutthaya, we would have missed him. If we had not stayed that long talking to the lady, we probably would have been somewhere else. If we decided to go the other way around the pond, there's no way we would have gotten to him. Even the little details of me taking the bike and me not having my phone in my pocket, God was putting together to save this man. This man's alive to this day. I've seen him going around on his motorcycle, taking his little girl to school and bringing her back. God cared about him and loved him enough to make everything to come together so his people could be there to save him. That's what he's wanting to do for the rest of the world. He's looking for you and I to be ready, watching, waiting, so we can rescue people and make sure they are alive and with Him for eternity. That's a story I will never forget. In God's miraculous moving, that one day for just one person, I saw God's passion for all the Thai people. Can you guess how many unreached Thais there are? 19 million alone in the central plains where we live. 17 million to the northeast, a place that has a lot of drought and hard times. Then 7 million to the north and 5 million to the south, down by the beautiful seashores in Malaysia. Thailand's a country with a population that's 83% Buddhist, about 10% Muslim, and a small miscellaneous of other religions. So that gives us what? 
a total of 66 million unreached men, women, boys, and girls that God knows and loves. And there are all kinds of distinctly unique people groups that are unreached too. You can read all about them at joshuaproject.net. There are a lot of Chinese, one and a half million Cambodians, 1.2 million Thai Muslims, another million Malay, and 100,000 or more Vietnamese. Unreached tribes come from all around. The Rohingya, the Shan, the Mon, and the Burmese from Myanmar. The Lahu, the Kamu, the Karin, and the Mong from the mountains. And from far away come the Punjabi and the Japanese, the Koreans and the Russians. Why? because Thailand is a great place for tourism with gorgeous beaches and beautiful jungles. And it's a country with many economic opportunities. It's also a place that continues to need scores of missionaries and heaps of prayers. As Nathan and I walked through the rice fields near our previous home, my heart was overwhelmed with the memories of sharing Jesus with our neighbors and the great remaining need. I'm obviously standing right in the middle of a rice field. But this is not just any old rice field. This is the place where, where we lived for seven years, right in the center of Thailand. Come up from Bangkok up to Ayutthaya, and then it just, it's like this everywhere. Rice field after rice field after rice field. We would watch them flatten the fields in the mud. We would see them plant, and then it would grow and grow until finally we'd come to this point where it's just gorgeous, beautiful, deep green, and ready to be cut. And then the machines come in, and it's so fun to just watch them swoop up the whole thing and into a truck and haul it away and then we get to eat it. This is beautiful and yet when I see it I cannot help but think of what Jesus said in Matthew 9 when he said the fields they're ready for harvest but the laborers they're so few. Jesus could see, he could look and he could know that people around him needed love, they were ready for it, they just needed somebody to care about him, someone to come close and to show them his love and lead them to God. And that's the way Thailand is. There's just millions and millions of people. It stretches here. When we first came here, there wasn't a church for miles and miles, just temple after temple and no Christians around. And now there's a few starting to grow, starting to come. But the harvest is huge. It's waiting for people to come. If you were to, to ask people to look around, to find out if they know Jesus, you would find almost nobody really knows. In fact, there's less than 1% of evangelical Christians in this country and millions of Buddhists. So does he need laborers? Is he looking for people? Yes, he's looking for families that will just move, single people that will just go and be next to the people that need Jesus' love. Can you go to Thailand or some other highly unreached place? Maybe so. God will help you know if you should. In the meantime, there are quite a few Thais living in other countries. According to the 2010 U.S. Census, 237,000 Thais live in the United States. The largest group outside of Thailand is in Los Angeles, California. I've driven by the place they call Thai Town. You will also find quite a few in San Francisco, then over in Clark County, Nevada, Cook County, Illinois, Dallas County, Texas, and Fairfax County, Virginia. When you meet them, it's pretty likely that they will not be a Christian. God will show you how to be their friend and what to say. You can learn a lot on how to reach out to them at our website, reachtheworldnextdoor.com. And you can also write out the site that has materials in their own language, which is mylanguagemylife.com, and hand that to them. I want to meet many Thai people in heaven. I know God doesn't want any of them to drown in their sins. He's doing what he can to direct you and me towards them. Let's open our eyes and our ears. Let's be ready to jump in because they're drowning. Let's reach the world ASAP.